In the last few years, scientists discovered quite a few intriguing exoplanets with conditions potentially suitable for liquid water and even for maybe life to develop. But out of all planets discovered so far, there's actually maybe just a handful that right now are super exciting and do have a slightly higher chance than usual to possibly be even Earth-like or at least have conditions for a permanent temperate ocean somewhere on the surface. And in some of the previous videos you can find in the description, we've discussed several such planets where scientists have discovered hints of, for example, liquid oceans, or at least water vapor, or surface conditions possibly somewhat similar to planet Earth. But today we're going to discuss one of the most exciting such planets that in one of the recent studies was investigated by James Webb once again, discovering something else super exciting about it and possibly confirming the existence of what we now refer to as eyeball planets. Planets that might resemble this. This is an artist's impression of what could be one of the most common planets in the entire galaxy. And that's because these are extremely common around red dwarfs and could actually represent the best chance to discover life. And so, how wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss a star system LHS 1140 and talk about one of the planets discovered back in 2017 that seems to be an extremely promising location for potentially hosting a permanent temperate ocean, the planet known as LHS 1140b. In terms of distance, the second closest transiting exoplanet from planet Earth and a planet whose surface temperature seems to be low enough for this planet to have a permanent ice cover with one really exciting spot facing the star. The spot resembling something like this, which makes this planet resemble an eyeball. And all of this is based on one of the most recent studies you can find in the description. But what exactly is happening here? Well, first let's, I guess, discuss the star system. As you can see from this image, there are actually two terrestrial planets here, with one larger and more massive than the other. But the planet 1140c orbits very, very close to the star and is thus extremely likely to be really hot. Yet the farther planet, 1140b, seems to be about 1.7 times larger than planet Earth and is maybe about 5.6 times more massive. And because it's bigger and more massive than Earth, it's technically a super-Earth. But in this case, it wasn't actually clear if this was a terrestrial world or maybe some kind of a small gas giant, such as a mini Neptune, which in this case would make this planet maybe not as exciting. And so in some of the recent observations, scientists wanted to focus on trying to identify what kind of elements exist in its atmosphere, and specifically they wanted to see if there is any hydrogen. Because the presence of hydrogen would indicate that this planet contains a primary atmosphere, kind of like Neptune, Uranus, Jupiter and Saturn, and is thus extremely likely to be a kind of a mini Neptune with potentially extremely hostile conditions on the surface. However, if they discovered something else, and specifically if no hydrogen was seen whatsoever, it would indicate that whatever was here was most likely formed afterwards, or essentially this was a secondary atmosphere, thus very likely making this planet terrestrial just like planet Earth. For example, on our own planet, our atmosphere has changed so much over the 4.5 billion years that in some sense it's even hard to call it secondary. It sort of changes every geological era, which very often results in very different climatic conditions. But the point here was to observe the atmosphere by seeing the starlight going through the thin layer above the surface of the planet and then looking at the spectroscopic signature in order to see what's going on. And so by doing this several times, scientists were finally able to see what is here and what most likely isn't, with the combined transmission spectrum shown right here. And what this essentially shows us is that, for the most part, it looks like there is no hydrogen. Or any kind of hydrogen-rich atmospheres were almost completely ruled out based on these recent observations. And though this could suggest that there is basically no atmosphere whatsoever, a much more likely interpretation based on the data actually suggests a nitrogen-rich atmosphere with very likely a relatively rich carbon dioxide component. And though the actual significance here is only 2.3 sigma, it's still large enough to suggest that this atmosphere could be super exciting. A nitrogen-rich atmosphere is of course what we find on objects like Earth and the Saturn's moon Titan, the only two objects in the solar system that both have thick atmospheres and active liquid cycles. But on the other hand, because this is a red dwarf system and the planet here takes approximately 25 days to orbit the star, 
and also is actually in the habitable zone as well, this technically allows us to work out a few more assumptions about this planet and of course its surface. First of all, based on the density calculations, scientists don't think it's made out of pure rock because it's just not dense enough. And so it's unlikely to be a pure terrestrial world because its density is 5.9 grams per centimeter cube. And because this planet is so large, in order to have this density, it would either have to have a really thick hydrogen envelope, which as I mentioned previously, has not been detected at all, or it has to have at least 9% by mass water. Or in other words, there is a very high chance it could be an ocean world. And in this case, an ocean world surrounded by enriched nitrogen atmosphere, making it resemble our own planet to some extent. But once again, because this is a red dwarf system, as this planet orbits the star, it's also extremely likely to be always tidally locked. Or essentially, one of the sides always faces the star. And as a result, this ocean world will very likely be frozen entirely on the dark side and will most likely be melted on the bright side, with the most likely appearance being something like this. And right now there is a lot of evidence that LHS 1140b is indeed an eyeball planet. A planet that's technically an ice world, consisting of 9 to maybe 20% water by mass, that forms a large ocean on the surface, but that also contains this unusual iris-like region, or basically the region of melted ice, that's at least 4000 kilometers across. That's based on the temperature calculations and based on the assumption for the nitrogen-based atmosphere. And what's even more exciting is of course the temperature of the water. In this case, the temperature in this iris, or inside of this eyeball, could actually reach 20 degrees Celsius, or about 68 Fahrenheit. And that's of course extremely similar to what we usually find in oceans on Earth, and is obviously warm enough for an active marine ecosystem. And so that means that this particular planet has now become a really exciting candidate to one day discover alien marine life. Assuming, of course, life can evolve inside these ocean worlds, and of course assuming that all the calculations and all of the observations were somewhat correct. And naturally, because of these discoveries, there are now going to be a lot more observations of this unusual world, a much more thorough analysis of its atmosphere, and possibly even signs of reflection coming from the surface that can help us see if it's maybe ice or something entirely different. And so in this case, we still need at least one year of observations to physically confirm the existence of nitrogen atmosphere, and possibly a few more years to discover other elements, including carbon dioxide and maybe even oxygen. And since back in 2020, Hubble Space Telescope has already confirmed water vapor signs in the atmosphere of this planet, at the moment every single observation makes this bizarre eyeball planet even more exciting. And if the global ocean and of course the existence of liquid water and the atmosphere is confirmed here, it means that a lot of other similar planets or a lot of other eyeball planets are very likely to be somewhat similar. For example, here is the artist's impression for TRAPPIST-1F, the system that might actually contain at least two of these planets, and here is the interpretation of Kepler-1652b, an extremely similar world with potentially extremely similar conditions. And that means that within the next five years, we might finally have the confirmation for the existence of eyeball planets, making them some of the most exciting prospective worlds to discover alien life. But until these future discoveries and until more confirmations, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Check out some of the previous videos on similar topics, discussing similar planets or even more exciting planets with some even weirder conditions in one of the videos in the description. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.